What do you normally shoot when you play? Mid 80s on a good day. Okay. Well, I mean, I can shoot a 90, but 98, I can shoot anywhere from there. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty consistent. What do you think the difference is between those scores? Oh, and by the way, like Mike Weir shot 59 74. Yeah. Right, the same 15 shots difference. I lose a lot of strokes off the tee. Okay, so I'll hit some drivers today. Yeah, I'm going to say most of my strokes are probably off the tee. Okay. Um, my short game leaves something to be desired. Okay. But I get no kind of progress. Yep. Um, and I'm kind of bugged to like fighting a, a T way miss. So I'll, I'll hit a slice, put the irons at like a, you know, like kind of a loop of eight to the, to the left. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, half the place. Yep, something in the middle. Okay. Um, distance isn't really an issue. Um, I mean, I can't call fairly far away. Um, okay. All right, let me see. Have you taken lessons before? Uh, I took like three uh, in this uh, spring. Yep. Those are lessons. And what was, the what was the idea in those lessons? What were they trying to get you to do? Um, well, I was extending pretty early. Okay. So I had to come on my way back. I had to kind of keep back around. Okay. Um, and the same thing with the driver. I was kind of going in on it. Yep. That's been my issue for. I've always been pretty sneaky in the ball. Okay. I've had a lot of bad shots. Um, so if the club hits the ground before the ball, that's too shallow, not too yeah. steep, right? I just don't want you to have the wrong terminology, thinking, "Hey, I need to get more shallow." It's just going to lead you to hit to more fat shots. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. What club is this one? Overall, it's pretty good. Too early. Okay. Okay. 
first thing is trying to feel like we can get this higher. Okay, and if this goes higher, obviously it's gonna take longer for it to get to the ball, but it, all, it also means that now you have time to get your body through. All right, so I wanna, I wanna try and feel today that you're almost getting your body to the finish with the club more down here. And as it, as it kind of you know, speeds up and, and swings up, that it finishes with the arms more out in front of you this way and not bent over here, which puts the club to your right side. Right, so when the club swings through, I don't really want it to pass your belly so early. I want the belly to keep moving to avoid the time when the club ends up pointing back at it just like it's set up, okay? So lift up this way, and then from there, we're gonna feel like the body turns through, but the club ends up a little lower right now, almost like it's a punch shot. But this is more of resequencing your arms blasting off your chest. Right? So if I go to the top of my swing and I'm looking like this and I start pulling my arm down without moving my chest or my left shoulder, right? that arm's going to go all the way around me like that. Right? We can't finish that way. I want it to feel as though that the body is moving and as the body starts to face the target, that's what's bringing the arms and club down. So you can see from the top of my swing, like nothing's really changing here because I'm turning my body first then I can blast that thing off to get it straight over here. So I think the if we just kind of wrap this up really quickly, it's going to be highest hands, lowest and widest hands. And how do we make our body, how do we get our pivot to make that happen, to help you know support that idea? Big turn and a lift, arms low but arms extended. And so this golf club itself has to make the widest arc on the way through today. If it comes through and it pulls in and it gets shorter, those are thin shots, those are hooks, probably slices with the driver, okay? So, uh, no ball, show me a couple practice swings. Good. So one more time. Take it all the way back, crank it up a little higher than you're used to. Okay, and all the way through into the finish. Good. So hold it here. Give me your arms down here. So they're going to finish lower. All right, so if I stood here, you probably wouldn't get to me, so start again. Okay, so take it up to the top. Big high back swing with the hands. Okay, and body through first. Good. There you go. Hold it there. Extend. Push this forward. Lean back. So right now you look like the PGA Tour logo. Right, that's what I'm trying to get you to. So if I'm your mirror, right, I've got, I get my legs close together, so my knees are pretty much touching. That makes sure that my lower body's square to the target, and then from there I lean back. So you can see my right shoulder and my right hand are behind my right leg here. Right, so we're going from this high spot here to there. Yep. Knees together, lean back. Good, one more time. Knees together, lean back. Good, and let your knees squeeze, let them touch. If they can't touch, your stance might be too wide, right? Drag your foot just a little bit, but try and get your knees to touch. And they're the closest thing to the target. That little pressure point in my knees are the closest thing to the target. Everything else is leaned back behind that. Good, again. It'll feel like the right leg straightens the most. And as it straightens, it actually backs up a little bit to allow the left knee to touch it. Yeah, and through. Good, way better. Better sequence on that. Do it faster this time. Cool. Let's hit a shot. Maybe 70% of your total speed trying to hit the high hands and then knee squeeze and stand tall. Okay, 
and just smooth it into that finish. Good job, great strike. So with this grip, you're gonna curve the ball one way only. I'm not gonna mess with it, right? I'm gonna leave it the way it is, but we're gonna find a way for this to curve one way only. But if the arms and hands are your steering wheel and your gas pedal, it's hard to drive the car. So we want to try and feel as though today that, you know, your hands are going to do what they can do to get the ball to launch the way we want it. And depending on how much you can get your body to the finish without the arms getting there first, right, that's going to dictate our curve. So, I mean, there's lots of talk about how strong grips lead to draws and weak grips lead to fades. But you go on the PGA Tour and it's the exact opposite. So the best players in the world with the strongest grips fade it and the guys with the least, the weakest grips draw it but there really are no weak grips on tour. Like Bryson would have the weakest grip because his grip is the size of my arm. Right. You can't get it strong with that size of grip. So he chose that size of grip to allow his hand to sit like this. He draws the shit out of it, right? right? But like Dustin Johnson, Paul Lazinger, David Duvall, they have the strongest grip we've ever seen and all of those guys fade it. So there is no because of this, therefore the ball will do something. It has way more to do with how the arms and body work. Right, so we're going to figure out what the ball's going to do today. I'm not quite sure yet, but trying to make sure that we can get the hands up and then the body leading all the way until the knees are squeezed together. Then the club comes through. That's kind of our, our rhythm, our tempo to our, our sequence to it. Okay, said a few more. So if your arms and hands get to the finish over here before your body's turn to face the target, that ball's going to go right, okay? So the more that we can feel as though that it's your body getting over here first and your arm whips out second, right, that club's going to stay back relative to your turn for longer. It might feel like it takes longer to make the whole swing. So part of the reason why I ask people to swing at, say, 70% is to give them time to do things, but to show them that the swing can actually take longer and still accomplish the same thing. Right. Okay. I never used to be able to hit a draw to save my life. <laughs> Cool. Change clubs. Do anything? Okay, backswing got short. The longer you can take it up, the smoother the downswing can be. But if the hands only go back a certain way, your bot certain height, sorry, your body's going to try and overcompensate by giving it too much speed, and that speed will go past the ball. Clearly, we don't want to accelerate things past the golf ball, right? We want all of our speed into the ball, and then we're done with it. So big, high backswing all the way until your knees squeeze together. And it's going to be like impact squeeze, like in the time between impact and squeeze is so small.
So part of, I don't like teaching feel too much because everyone's feel is going to be different. But the one feel that we can talk about is how much squeeze you have in your arms, right? And feeling as though that you can loosen up and lighten up your arms for this, it's going to make it feel as though that when they get back here higher, now as they come through, they're not going to be rushing to get back to the ball. Right. So keeping that squeeze out of the arms, keeping the wrists kind of floppy and flimsy, all that's going to do is allow you to get more snap and more release at the bottom. Like when we snap a towel, right, if that thing was like a steel rod, it wouldn't be a snap. Right, but we have to find a way to get that snap going so it has to be loose and that's where this happens right my snap in my swing is the same thing as snapping a towel i have to stop this to allow that to flip out okay so trying to feel like the arms are a little softer through this long back swing all the way to the knee squeezing Let's go to the blue flag. Soft arms, high on the backswing. Once those knees touch, your whole pivot's done. Once the knees touch, we don't need to turn anymore. You're done. Higher on the way back. Soften up. I know that's a hard part. Yeah. But take it back all the way as high as you can go, as soft as you can go. So when the swing gets rushed and it doesn't take long enough, it's hard to really get the whole thing to snap the whole thing to release the way we want it to. So you, know, you can imagine that if I only brought it back this far, I'd never get the towel to snap. It has to be a certain distance in order to create all that fun stuff. So feeling as though that at setup, that the arms are pretty soft, right? Being able to take it as far back as you can go, my arms are pretty soft. All that's gonna allow me to do is that when I start turning through to the, getting the knees to touch, it actually lengthens things out. That's what creates like that arm structure with the right bends and all that fun stuff. It happens because I'm turning away from my arms. So we can almost think of this like where you're going to get your lag in your swing is going to be from your left lat or your ribs here and your glove. And the farther that you can turn this lat and pull those ribs around to the right without the glove catching up to them, that's your lag, right? So we've got so many different areas we can lag it. I can lag my hips relative to my chest. I can lag my arm relative to my chest, right? And then I can lag the shaft relative to my arm, right? But most people think lag is just this angle here. 
right? But the, the lag that you're not finding right now is the lag of the arm lagging across the body like this. So it's like if you were to stand here with the back of your left hand and you had to knock someone out here beside you, you wouldn't just wave your arm at it. You'd turn your body and you'd start to really pivot to launch your arm, right? To create more speed that way. And so as a lefty, that's or a righty, that's my way this way. I want to try and feel as though that when I get my arms higher, that this part of me and this part of me have to separate the most. So when I get down to the golf ball down here, I've got my glove down there, but now I feel like I'm pulling this whole lat rib thing all the way up and around. And if that keeps pulling, that's what's going to help me finish more this way. So once I take it up to the top nice and soft, if I power my arms down, now my glove gets too close to my lead ribs. So your right ribs, my left right here, trying to feel like from the top that those are the things that are pulling me into the ball that I'm pulling by here. And when I pull by there, you can see that my arm almost sucks in toward my chest instead of blasting off my chest. Okay, so soft with the arms, high with the hands, and pull these left ribs all the way around. Like now they're facing over there, right? They're pointed at those big tall flags over there. So you'd be pointing to them probably, you know, over there somewhere. High hands and pull and pull this all the way around, but you've got a lot of push going. Make sense? Yeah. So uh, grab the club with just your glove hand, okay? I want you to make just a right arm swing, but I want you to pretend that with this swing that I'm gonna ask you to throw the club down the fairway. Don't actually let go of it, but we're gonna pretend we're throwing it down the fairway. And I want you to get a feeling of what your body does in order to launch that. Yeah, no left hand on it. Yeah. So now you like you finished with this so long and so out that way, which is the opposite of where you were before. Because when this starts to push, right, now it's too close to me. Right? Simply putting this grip onto what I'm trying to be my lag source, look at my arm. I got it all bent. So, you know, I love analogies in golf and I think of like the boat and the water skier all the time. Because it's the greatest analogy of the water skier gets pulled. Never in the history of water skiing has the water skier decided to go past the boat, right? Doesn't happen. So here's my boat, here's my skier. And if I can feel as though that I keep pulling on this thing all the way around, it's going to start to pull this in. It's going to give us the right amount of chest to arm lag. And as a result of that, we're going to get the shaft to arm lag with it. And once that finally gets down out at the bottom, it ends up being way longer in the finish. And it's the one thing you'll notice, like, a lot this week, if you watch any of the open on TV, those guys are trying to hit the ball low, right? If I need to hit the ball high, that's where I take this club and I throw it past me, right? Like a flop shot around the green. But if I'm trying to hit this low, I'm doing everything I can to leave my hands and club back here as I start pulling on my lead ribs and lead lat in order for me to get down this way and hit, right? Low shots out of the wind. So crank it up to the top, hold it up there for me. Yep. All right. Good. Okay. So I'm going to hold this here. Start pulling with these lats around the corner. Good. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Notice how it, it feels as though that this has moved more than here. Yeah. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Now stand tall to the knees are straight. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. That's where I'm trying to get you. Okay. And if you did that, the club's going to hit the ball. Right? The same way that if I asked you to take it with just your right hand and throw this club down the fairway, you're not just going to go like that and let go of it. You're going to start turning from here, get your body facing the target, then let go of it. If we don't get it, we'll throw some clubs. Same as everything else, just a bunch of nines.
Not bad. A couple practice swings. Like this is the opposite feel of using arm muscles to put the club into the ball, yeah. right? This is trying to get your body to sling your arms and throw your arms out. Andrew, Andrew's golf bag. Golf bag, yeah. Good. That's higher. So let's find a speed to this that lets you actually feel the skier getting pulled by the boat all the way past the golf ball. And I think that's like, if we can get our heads wrapped around that analogy to understand how, you know, that once this starts to pull, getting my knees together actually pulls this around the corner more and feel as though that that's going to be our lag source and we get a feel to it. That's the concept of your swing that I want to shape today. Really good. So take it up to the top, hold it up there. Highest backswing, softest arms. Hold it at the top. Okay, good, loosen up the arms. Take it back even higher, get the arms up more. Yeah, so it's not turning, it's lifting your arms up. There you go, good. Yeah, your rotation's fine. Just we need the arms to go up relative to where they started down here. So I'm hoping that we have no fades. Fades are gone. The ball might go left, but it just goes straight left. And everything else draws to the right. Bigger step, Paul. Walk really far. Yeah, big long step.
Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, ball position, sometimes when the alignment gets too far to the left, the ball position creeps up too far forward. Okay, so let's make sure that you're aimed pretty much at your target, um, and let's make sure the ball position's in the right spot. too far forward there you go good stuff okay high arms that are light loose soft feathery not bad you got it back here pretty good and then you squeezed the arms and pulled them down so this caught up to this And so if you wanted to feel like you made a practice one with this, it would be, you know, taking it to the top, a rock, super, taking it to the top, holding it up there, and feeling as though that you can start, you can get the club back down to the ball only by pulling your right side, only by pulling this right side all the way around until it gets to the ball, right? So this thing basically goes from here, pointed at the ball, all the way around 180 degrees over there and it has to lead so we've heard all the like i've heard all the stuff about how the the swing starts in your feet and it starts with your hips but when we strap in the best players to 3d systems it's not it starts with here right when they get to the top right they fall onto their front side they start pulling the ribs out of the way and then they straighten this leg to catapult the ribs around the corner and that's exactly what you would find if I asked you to hold onto a golf club and fire it down the fairway with one arm. And if you ever get a chance to, do it. Like, if let's just say you went and teed off right here. You, you know, you get to the front of the fairway, you're 400 yards from the hole, just put your bag down, grab a golf club, and just launch it. And see how far down there you can do it, pulling by all this stuff. In order to get the right feel of the pull, which pulls from here all the way up through the chain, all the way to here, it might take longer to, to just to get it straight, just to get the water skier moving, it might take longer. And then once it's there, that's when we pull it out of the way. A little less squeeze to the shoulders and arms. Good job. Way better. But I say your priority is still higher and higher and higher in the backswing. And that might just mean that you have to bend your left elbow a little bit more to raise it up. It's okay. Just crank it up there. 